brothers and sisters, the last two Sundays' gospel spoke about working in the vineyard. Twenty-fifth Sunday is about hiring hiring laborers to work in the vineyard, and twenty-sixth Sunday is about the father asking his two sons to work in the vineyard. Today's gospel is a continuation of last week's gospel, and is about the wicked tenants in a vineyard. Jesus used this parable to reveal to us. The way of his father, and what God's ways look like. Once we understand the way of God, we can better participate in it. In Jesus' time, vineyard were very different from what they are today. A fence was designed to keep out both wild animals, which may ravage. The vineyard and the thief, which may steal the grapes. The wine press consists of two troughs, either hollow out of the wall of the rock, or built of bricks. One is higher than the other, and connected by a channel. The grape was pressed in the higher trough, and the juice went off to the lower trough. The watchtower was to watch for thief when the grape was wiping, and it also served as a lodging for those working in the vineyard. In those days, it is common for a vineyard owner to lease out their estate, and they were mostly interested in collecting the rental at the right time. The rent. May be paid may be paid as a fixed amount of money, a fixed amount of fruit produce, or an agreed percent percentage of the crops. In today's gospel, the vineyard represents the nation of Israel, or the world, and the landowner is God. He planted, create everything, and then lease it. To the tenant, the tenants were the religious leader of Israel, who were charged by God with the welfare of the nation. The slave or the messenger, who were sent, were the prophet sent by God, and they were rejected and killed. The son who came at last is Jesus Himself. The parable tells us much about God's way. God entrusts human being with many things. The owner of the vineyard entrusts it to the tenant. He did not even stand over them to exercise police-like supervision. He went away and left them with their task. God is patient. The landowner sent slave after slave. He did not come with sudden vengeance when one slave has been abused and ill-treated. He gave the tenant chances after chances to respond to his appeal. God's just judgment. In the end, the landowner took vineyard from the tenant. And list the vineyard to another tenant, who will give him the produce at harvest time. The parable also tells us much about our human nature. It tells us that we are privileged. The vineyard was equipped with everything: the fence, the wine press, the watchtower, which would make the task of the tenants easy. And enable them to execute their task without much concern. God does not give us the task to do; He also gives us the means whereby to do it. The parable also tells us about human freedom. The landowner leaves the tenant to do their task as they like. God is not a dictator. A dictatorial. Taskmaster, 
He is like a wise leader who allocates tasks and trusts people to finish the tasks. The parable also tells us about human unstability. The, to everybody come a day of, of reckoning from God. We are answerable for the way in which we have carried out the task of God gave us to do. The, te- the parable also tells us the deliberateness of human sins. The tenant carry out a deliberate policy of rebellion and disobedience towards the landowner. Very often, sin is a de- deliberate operation to God. It is the taking of our own way when we know quite well what God's way is. The parable also tells us much about Jesus. It tells of the claim of Jesus' divine sonship. It shows us quite clearly Jesus lift, lifting himself out of the succession of the prophet. Those who came before him were messengers of God. No one could deny that they are servants, and Jesus is the Son. The parable tells of the sacrifice of Jesus. It makes it clear that Jesus know what lay ahead of him. In the parable, the wicked tenant kill the son. Jesus, willing and with open eye, went to his death. Brothers and sisters, learn from the parable that God is giving us a tremendous privilege of participating in God's work, of caring for his world. If God leads to us God's world and the goods of this world, then we are tenant or caretaker of God's world, and especially his people. Therefore, we ought to help God by caring for all the things of this world and help to promote his kingdom. It is an incredible privilege that God gave to Israel, and it is a tremendous privilege that God gave to us, especially since through our baptism, we are called to participate in God's way, to promote his goodness to those around us. Furthermore, we know that we are not owner. God is the owner, and we are the tenant. Another way to understand this is to realize that we don't really own anything in the world. We cannot take our possession with us when we die. God is the one who owns everything, and God shares many things with us for his purpose and for the good around us. This helps us to participate in God's way, to be generous with others as he is generous with us, and to help us to find our way to being with God for eternity. Consider relationship inside your family, your parent, your sibling, your spouse, and your children. We may consider such relationship as a kind of possession. Each person ultimately belongs to God and not to us. God has known things and even people to us for this time in this place for God's purpose and for everyone's good. This is a great responsibility. We call it stewardship. It is not about money. It is about taking care of the things of God and the people we encounter in our life. It is because God wants us to take care of them for this time, for a, pe- for a brief period of our life. In a short while, bed and wine on the altar will be transformed into body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. The same Jesus, whom the tenants seized, 
sold out of the vineyard and killed. Jesus gave up everything on the cross so that we can participate in God's life. When we receive the Eucharist, we should ask Jesus to help us to be a good steward of God's many and very gifts.